Chris here from Project Option, and in this options trading strategies video, we're going to talk about the bear call spread. Now, the bear call spread is the combination of a short call and a long call. So, to construct a bear call spread, you're going to sell a call option at one strike price, and you're going to buy another call option at a higher strike price. So, let's go ahead and get into the general strategy characteristics for the bear call spread. So the sale of a call spread is also sometimes referred to as a short call spread, a bear call spread, or a call credit spread. Now this is a bearish position that consists of selling a call option while also buying another call option at a higher strike price. The strategy builds on a short call position by limiting the risk with the long call. So if you are bearish on a stock and you don't want to short the stock or sell a naked call, you could sell a bear call spread as that'll give you a bearish exposure to the stock, but you'll have significantly less loss potential than selling shares of stock outright or selling a naked call. So the maximum profit potential of a bear call spread is the credit received times 100. Now the maximum loss potential of a bear call spread is the width of the call strikes minus the credit received times 100. Now the expiration break-even price of a bear call spread is the short call's strike price plus the credit received. So that credit helps you out. Now the estimated probability of profit for a bear call spread is greater than 50% for out-of-the-money spreads, approximately 50% for at-the-money spreads, and less than 50% for in-the-money spreads. Now we'll go over some examples to show you what that really means. Now, after expiration, if both options are in the money, then no stock position is taken because the, the assignment of the short call and the exercise of the long call both offset, and essentially what happens is that the short call spread just expires to its intrinsic value and no stock position is taken. However, if only the short call is in the money at expiration, the position will expire to negative 100 shares of stock per short call contract. So essentially you'll have a short stock position of 100 shares with your sale price being the short call's strike price. Now in regards to assignment risk, if the short call is in the money before expiration, there's potential for early assignment of negative 100 shares of stock per short call contract. So now that you know the general strategy characteristics, let's go ahead and look at a hypothetical bear call spread example and look at the expiration risk profile graph. So here we see we have some various strike prices and corresponding call option prices based on those strikes. So at the time of these option prices, let's say the stock price is at $300 and we want to take a bearish stance on the stock and sell a bear call spread. So to do this, we're going to sell the 310 call for $8 and we're going to buy the 320 call for $5. So our net credit in this example is going to be $3 since we're receiving $8 for the short 310 call and we're paying $5 for the long 320 call. So let's go ahead and take a look at the expiration risk profile graph for this position. So as we can see here, our short call strike price is 310 our long call strike price is 320 and our break even price is 313. Now that's because we sold the 310 320 call spread for a net credit of $3 and our break even price is going to be the short call strike price plus the $3 credit which comes out to $313. So as we can see here, the stock price at entry is at $300 which will leave us with a full profit of $300 if the stock price remains unchanged or even rises as much as $10. Now that's because at any price below 310, the 310 and 320 call will both expire worthless and since we collected a net $3 credit for that spread, we'll keep the $300 of premium. So if the stock price is 313 at expiration, that short 310 call is going to be worth $3 at expiration and the long call is going to expire worthless. So the net value of the spread at expiration, if the stock price is at 313 is $3. Now since we sold the spread for a $3 credit, that leaves us with no profits or losses, not including commissions. Now if the stock price rises to 320 the spread will be worth $10 at expiration. Now that will happen if the stock price is at or above 320 So as we can see here, we have a, a capped loss potential of $700, and that's because if the spread is worth $10 at expiration, we're going to have a loss of $7 per spread because we sold the spread for 
and that comes out to a maximum loss per spread of $700. So unlike a short call position where the losses keep getting larger and larger as the stock price increases, a short call spread has a defined loss potential. Now in regards to the probability of profit, this spread has a greater than 50% probability of profit and that's because this is an out of the money call spread. Now it's out of the money because the short call and long call are both above the stock price. So since the stock price is at 300 and we sold the 310, 320 call spread, the probability of profit is greater than 50% because the stock price can rise as much as $13 and we won't lose money on this trade. So as long as the stock price stays the same, decreases, or even increases slightly, we can still make money on this position. Now, another confirmation of the spread's higher probability of profit is the fact that we can only make $300 on the trade, but we can lose as much as $700. So since our loss potential is more than twice our profit potential, this spread has a higher probability of profit. So now that you've seen the expiration risk profile graph, let's go ahead and take a look at some real bear call spread examples to show you how the position performs as the stock price changes through time. All right, so example number one is a bear call spread versus a falling stock price. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is 119.24, and our bear call spread is gonna be constructed by selling the 120 call for $3.43, and buying the 125 call for $1.50. Now both options expire in 39 days and this is a $5 wide short call spread. So our net credit received in this case is gonna be $1.93 and that's because we collected $3.43 for the 120 call and we paid $1.50 for the 125 call. Now with a net credit of 193, our break even price is gonna be the short calls strike price of 120 plus the 193 credit, which comes out to 121.93. Now our maximum profit potential is if the spread expires worthless, in which case we'll keep the 193 credit, and in actual dollar terms, that will translate to a profit of $193. Now our maximum loss potential is going to be $307, and that's because we sold a $5 wide call spread for $1.93, and if that spread is worth $5 at expiration or its maximum value, we're going to lose $317 or $307. So that comes from the $5 wide call strikes less the 193 credit times 100, which comes out to 307. So let's go ahead and see how this position performed as the stock price changed through time. All right, so example trade number one. So we can see that the stock price starts right around $120, and we know that we're short the 120 call and long the 125 call. And our break-even price is 121.93. Now, as we can see here, as time passes, the stock price decreases and then kind of increases back to our short call strike price of 120, but then ultimately ends up below $115 at expiration. So as we can see here, as time passes and the stock price is decreasing, the bear call spread's value is also decreasing. So at expiration, the short 120 call and the short 125 call expire completely worthless because they are out of the money, and therefore we keep the entire credit of $1.93, which comes out to a profit per spread of $193. So this goes to show that if you sell a call spread and the stock price remains below your short call strike price through expiration, you're going to you're going to experience steady profits and you will experience the maximum profit potential at expiration. All right, so example number 2, we're going to look at a example where the stock price plummets after a bear call spread is initiated. So here's the setup. The initial stock price is 401.92 and we're going to sell the 405 call for $19.83 and we're going to buy the 445 call for $6.53. Now both options are expiring in 73 days. Now in this case our net credit is $13.30 which brings our break even price to the short call strike price of 405 plus the net credit of 1330 which comes out to 418.30. Now our maximum profit potential in this case is the credit of 13.30 times 100, which comes out to $1,330. Now our maximum loss potential in this case is $2,670, and that's because we sold a $40 wide call spread. We collected $13.30 for it, 
So if the spread's value goes to $40, we'll lose $2,670 per spread. So let's go ahead and see what happens to this spread over time as the stock price is changing. All right, so in this example, we can see that the stock price starts right around $405, and we're short the 405, 445 call spread for a total credit of $13.30. So as we can see here, with around 51 days to expiration, the stock price is right around our short call strike price of 405. However, the stock price ends up plummeting to around $350. And as we can see, the value of the spread drops from right around $13.30 to right around $0. So even with 50 days to expiration, this spread is essentially worthless because the stock price decreased significantly. Now in this case, since the spread is basically worthless and we have 50 days to expiration, it makes sense to buy back this short call spread because you have essentially nothing left to gain but you can still lose the maximum value of the spread if the stock price rallies back and ends up above the long call strike of one or 445 at expiration. So this is a great example that shows you if you have a significant stock price decrease while you're short a call spread, you can very well achieve the maximum profit potential with plenty of time to spare before expiration. In which case it's always advisable to go ahead and close the spread because you basically have nothing left to gain but everything left to lose. All right, so now that we've seen some winning trades, let's go ahead and take a look at a losing short call spread. So here is the setup. The initial stock price is 598.50, and we're going to sell the 635.705 call spread, and we're going to collect $16.35 for the 635 call, and we're going to pay $2.99 for the 705 call. Now both options expire in 49 days, and our net credit in this case is $13.36. So our break-even price is going to be the short call strike price of 635 plus the 1336 credit, which comes out to 64836. Now our maximum profit potential in this case is the net credit of 1336 times 100, which comes out to $1,336. So since we have a $70 wide short call spread in this case, our maximum loss potential is going to be $70 minus the credit of $13.36 times 100, which comes out to $5,664. So as we can see here, our loss potential is significantly more than our profit potential, which means this spread has a higher than 50% probability of making money. So let's go ahead and see what happens as the stock price is changing through time. So as we can see here, the stock price started right around $600 and we were short the 635.705 call spread. So unfortunately, in this case, the stock price was increasing steadily over time, and as we can see, the price of the 635.705 call spread was increasing as well. Now, when you sell a spread, you want its price to decrease, so naturally, when the, stock, when the spread's price was increasing, we have losses. So at expiration, the stock price was right around 705, and this spread was almost entirely in the money. Now that means the spread's value is right around $70 because since the spread's strike width is $70, the most it can be worth is $70. So since we sold the spread for $13.36, if the spread's value is worth $70 at expiration, we would lose the maximum loss potential of $5,664. So this is just an example that shows if you sell a call spread and the stock price increases significantly and your short call spread is entirely in the money at expiration, you're going to lose the maximum loss potential because that spread's price is going to increase towards its strike width. Now in this particular example, the short call is in the money at expiration and the long, one, the long 705 call is actually just barely out of the money. So that means the long call would expire worthless, but if you held the short call through expiration, you would be assigned 100 shares of short stock at $635 per share. So just keep in mind that if you have a short call spread where only the short call is in the money at expiration, you're going to take on a short call position if you don't close that spread. So let's go ahead and recap the summary of main concepts from this video. So first and foremost, selling call spreads is a strategy used by traders with a bearish outlook on a stock 
but don't want all the risk of shorting shares or selling a naked call. So a short call spread is a more conservative strategy compared to shorting shares of stock or selling a short or naked call. So selling a call spread has limited profit and loss potential, making it a much more conservative strategy than shorting shares or selling naked calls. And a trader who sells a call spread benefits from decreases in the stock price or implied volatility and the decay of the spread's extrinsic value as time passes, when it's out of the money. So if you sell an out of the money call spread, you really have more than one way to make money and therefore the probability of profit on that trade is generally greater than 50%. Now to close a short call spread before expiration, simply buy back the short call and sell the long call at their current prices to lock in profits or losses. Now this can be done in one transaction. Now if a trader holds a short call, a short in the money call spread through expiration, the trader will not end up with stock since the short call assignment and the long call exercise completely offset. However, if only the short call expires in the money, the resulting position will be negative 100 shares of stock per short call contract. So keep an, eye, keep an eye on that short call spread into expiration because if only the short call is in the money, you'll end up with a short stock position. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive all of our new YouTube videos as they come out.